I, in which our theme is water and centered around water, I would like to give thanks for the many gifts we received, the gifts of life and the gifts of beauty from the North Saskatchewan River, which runs through a Miskwichi Weskahegan, known as Beaver Hills House, Edmonton, where I live, where Westwood is situated, and where many of us who are attending today live. If you live in a different territory, I would invite you to name it in the chat. We give thanks also to our treaty partners, the people who have lived Soto, the Dene, the Blackfoot, the Nakota Sioux, Métis, and many others. This has been a traditional gathering place and a traditional place to live on the banks of the North Saskatchewan River. Hi, my name is Brenda Mr. Welcome to Westwood Unitarian this morning. We are so glad to be gathered together with you. Uh, Westwood is a compassionate community of free religious thought, inviting all people to rest, grow, and serve the world. This morning's service is full of tradition and ritual. We call it in gathering because many take a break over the summer, and this is a service that marks the beginning of a new season, a new church year. We will install our new board of trustees and join together for the water communion ritual. And of course, we will sing, welcome once again to Westwood. My name is Rebecca Patterson. This morning, as always, our service is a collaborative effort. Your service leaders this morning are the incoming board of trustees. You will meet us all in the board installation in just a moment. Traditionally, Reverend Ann Barker would lead the rituals in this service, the installation and the water blessing, but she is still recovering from her second knee replacement and will be back with us soon. Ann wrote the script for this service, and we are grateful that she's still looking after us despite her medical leave. We can look forward to her return on September 18th. I would like to say a special thank you to our lay chaplain, Dawn Hunter, as she steps into the role of officiant for these rituals. Our music this morning has been provided by Sheila Kaloran and by me. And tech hosting is being provided by Elara Stefana Godet and Bill Lee. If you have a chalice or candle nearby and wish to light it for this service, now is the time to bring it forward. The words of Reverend Marta I. Valentine in the book Becoming. In gatherings. In gatherings we are stirred like the leaves of the fall season rustling around sacred trees tossed hither and yon until we come to rest together, quietly, softly. We come to gather strength from each other. We come to give strength to each other. We come to ask for strength from the spirit of all that is and is not. When our hearts sing or when they frown, it is the way of compassion telling us to give. It is the way of peace telling us to share our gifts for we are happiest and most powerful when love is made apparent in and through us. Spirit of the circle that is love, as we twirl in this dance that is life, we give thanks for reminding us each day of our task of ministering to each other. With a safe, with a searching glance, a safe touch, a generous smile, a thoughtful word. Thank you for reminding us that we are always building our beloved Comunidad. Thank you for reminding us that through our covenant with you, we covenant with each other and are made whole. In gratitude, we celebrate with open hearts and minds. We discover who we are, separate from each other and within one another. In this circle that holds all life, may we ever work towards widening its boundaries until they are none. Amen, pause, blessed be. We light our shared chalices in the spirit of the ever widening circle.
Good morning, everyone. I am Dawn Hunter, Westwood's lay chaplain. Today, we mark the transition in the life of this community. Members accept a position on our board of trustees because they, are, they deep, care deeply about this church and are able at this time in their lives to contribute substantial amounts of time and effort to see that the congregation grows and thrives. We honor those who have served so well in the past and we acknowledge the transfer of power and responsibility to those who carry on. If we were in the building, we would call the board members to the front to face you. Instead, to begin, we will introduce you individually to the board. We have asked each board member when I call their name to introduce themselves. We will begin with your board president, Susan Anderson. Susan? Thank you, Don. Yes, I'm Susan Anderson. And um, yeah, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my, the pronouns I use are she, her. Um, I work as a counselor, a psychotherapist, and uh, my personality type preferences are introversion, intuitive world of ideas, um, feelings and relationships, and perceiving information. Um, yeah, I was born in the Ottawa Valley, or as Brenda said, the unceded territory of the Algonquin people, and uh, grew up there for a time and then grew up in a small town in Northern Ontario in the area of the Huron people. I moved to Edmonton at the age of 19 to go to university and uh, I was introduced to Unitarianism about almost 35 years ago, um, somewhat reluctantly by my partner Terry um, who encouraged me to give it a try. And after one hour, the first service, it was so creative and they were so stimulating, I was hooked. And so I've been a member of uh, a number of different Unitarian congregations ever since. Having been on the Westwood board the last seven years about, somewhat nervously but excitedly looking forward to the next year as president and uh, very much looking forward to serving and um, working on the team that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, next, I would like to introduce Maggie Davidson, who is our vice president on the board. Hi, I'm Maggie. Um, I have been coming to Westwood for about five years now. Um, I was introduced to Westwood by friends who encouraged me to come. And I was initially reluctant to come because I don't have a good past experience with church, but um, they eventually persuaded me to give it a try. And when I started coming, I really loved it. So I have now been coming for about five years. Um, previously, I have been quite involved with the social justice committee and still am involved with the social justice committee. And now this is my second year on the board. Thank you, Maggie. And Alfred Falk is our new treasurer. Alfred? I've been a member of Westwood for about 35 years. Um, not quite the beginning of Westwood, but pretty close to it. Uh, I've been on the board a number of times in the past, but the last time was more than a decade ago. So this will be uh, an interesting <laughs> rejuvenation of old skills, I guess. I don't think I have too much more to say, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. And Brenda Niscaro is our new secretary on the board. Brenda. There, um, yeah, I have been coming to Westwood uh, since the early 2000s when we had kids and for the most part I've been working with the children's committee but I do look forward to getting to know you all. Thanks. And Rebecca Patterson is our board trustee. Rebecca? Hello, 
Um, well, I've been coming to Westwood for just about 20 years now, and I can hardly believe it, but uh, my, my grown children are the proof of that because that I had a young family. We had a young family when we came. Um, most of the time on Sunday mornings, you would have seen me in front of Harmonia. Um, I'm the joyful uh, conductor of that wonderful choir at Westwood. And I serve on the music advisory committee that um, that chooses the hymns and uh, makes sure that we have musicians every Sunday. Um, also, I have been in the planning uh, committee for the winter solstice, which has meant a whole lot to me. So I'm looking forward to my time on the board. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And Brenda Jackson, our past president. Hello again. I'm, uh, I am past president. Uh, this is not the first time I've been past president. I've been involved with Westwood since the uh, early 80s and uh, like Alfred and, uh, and have, this has been my spiritual home and community through most of that time, except for the 15 years we lived away from Edmonton. Otherwise, Westwood has been my home community. And I am happy to be here on the board supporting this team for one more year to help with this transition and to provide some background and knowledge as we move into this new, talented, exciting team taking over. Thank you, Brenda, and thank you to everyone for helping us to get to know you a bit better. So you have been elected by the members of the Westwood Unitarian Society in our annual meeting held last May. Do you freely arrive before us today, willing to commit yourselves to these roles of both honor and accountability? We do. I, we do. Oh. While we welcome this year's board, we also take time to give thanks to the three members leaving the board, Lorian Kennedy, Jacqueline Ouellette, and Dean Wood, for the care and hard work you've offered this community. We appreciate your efforts, the decisions you've made, and the wisdom you've shown on behalf of us all. Because of your hard work and your generosity, Westwood has continued to be a strong and vital community. Thank you very much. Given the limitations of Zoom, it is clearer if only one person speaks at a time. So for the responsive reading in this ritual, each part will be read by one person representing the group. You're always welcome to read along at home. Representing our three retiring board members and all leaders who have served the Westwood board in the past, Lorian Kennedy will read the words on the right side of the screen. Lorian. We wish the new board well as you take on the torch of responsibility and the task of guiding this church through the next year. To you, we entrust the results of our time and energy these past years and leave you with our support and good intentions. The job is now yours to do, but we will help as we can when the need arises. If you are a member of the congregation, you're encouraged to read along at home while Jacqueline Ouellette reads the act of installation, because in Unitarian Universalist congregations, the authority to elect your leaders belongs to the membership. Jacqueline, please read the left screen. We call on you, whom we have elected, to care for this church community, and we pledge to you our support. We install you as our leaders and give you the power to make decisions on behalf of this community. We ask you to use your wisdom, your abilities, and your understanding of our religious principles to guide your decision-making. We also remind you to keep us informed, to consult with us, and to call on us as you see fit. Thank you for undertaking this work for our community. Now, Susan Anderson, your president, will read the right screen for the Board of Trustees, while the rest of the board accompanies her at home. With gratitude and a sense of responsibility, 
we accept the faith you have placed in us and pledge to carry out our duties to the best of our abilities. We shall honor the traditions which have made this place strong while remaining open to new solutions and opportunities. The torch has been passed. May you who are retiring accept your appreciation for work well done. For you continuing or beginning a new board role, we hope that your time in office brings you a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. May this year bless all of Westwood as we move forward together in shared ministry. Please join together now singing Spirit of Life. We come together to make meaning of our experience of water and of what happened to us over the summer. This 2021 in gathering service comes with mixed feelings because we find ourselves still meeting online. We had hoped to be meeting together in the real, in the real Westwood building for this beloved water communion. We had hoped we'd actually be hearing each other's water pour into the big bowl of water, hearing our communal laughter at our stories, actually seeing each other head to toe as we share meaningful stories with our whole selves. And yet, because of the ongoing pandemic, we have chosen to be cautious, to continue to do our creative best with the online format until we figure out how and when to return to our physical space of the Westwood building. For some of you today, today may be your first water communion with us, so it will all seem new. We're glad you are here online with us to share an online version of this beloved ritual of ours. So last Sunday afternoon, the worship team set up the water bowl in front of the building for our front lawn social time, where folks could pour water in and have a photo taken. Others sent in photographs of water collected from bodies of water that have nourished them this past summer. And so for this year's water communion service, we begin with a lovely video of those photographs. And then Dawn will lead us through the community sharing time and the water blessing.
So this is your opportunity now for sharing with one another, aloud or in the chat, what it is that sustains you in these times. What brings you strength? What refreshes? What offers comfort? What nourishes and nurtures? You're welcome to tap into the chat or raise your hand and speak. You can use the raise hand function in Zoom or put up your physical hand. Please keep in mind that this service is being recorded and that what you share will appear in the recording, so you might wish to be more general than specific. If there is time, I'll read out some of the messages in the chat, but I won't be reading the names, just the messages. So once again, what brings you strength? What refreshes? What offers comfort? What nourishes and nurtures you? You may now raise your hands and speak. I think the, the main thing first that nourishes me is relationships. Relationships with family, but also with communities such as this one. Being out in nature and realizing nature keeps on going no matter what, no matter what the politics are, nature keeps being there for us. And of course, all the water in our lives, all the rivers, the streams, the ponds, uh, and the water that we have so readily accessible in our homes. So that all gives me strength. Thanks. We also have some chats coming in, so maybe we can intersperse between the two. Uh, nature always amazes me. Oops, they're moving. So <laughs> Nature amazes you. Um, we add water from our new home and from Waskisu, Saskatchewan, from time with family. My husband, who has endless reserves of patience. Time in the woods, hearing the sounds of birds and coyotes sitting by a warming fire. Westwood support and refreshes, supports and refreshes. Blue sky, deliberate time to stop and smell the flowers in the sidewalk flower containers and in my garden. Hikes by streams, supportive friends, feeding the birds in our backyard. Swimming laps at my neighbor, neighborhood YMCA pool helps me stay sane. Family and friends to support each other, being in nature, especially our ravine and lake. Does anyone wish to raise their hand and speak at this time? I'll speak to Alberta Beach. Uh, I've been visiting Avery out at Lac St. Anne quite a bit this summer and that time together and that time in the lake has been nourishing and refreshing. That was the water that I poured into our communal bowl was water from the lake. We spent lots of time with our lawn chairs in the lake reading out loud to each other. So that's been a wonderful time. Would you like to maybe repeat our questions one more time, Don, just so folks have them in their mind to speak to if they'd wish? Sure. Um, what gives you strength or brings strength to you? What refreshes you? What comforts you? And what nourishes and nurtures you? Um, I'd have to say singing. Singing has this way of bringing breath in and out of you deeper than usual. And as you sing words, you're, in, you're fulfilling your need to express yourself. Can I? Go for it, Dawn. I just wanted to, to mention something um, here. When I read these, um, phrases, what brings you strength, what refreshes, what comforts, what nourishes and nurtures, I have a hard time really coming up with things. And maybe some of you are feeling this way, I don't know, but it's, it has been a very hard year. And I think sometimes finding those things can be very difficult. And sometimes noticing those things when they're right, you know, you're holding them in your hands and feeling grateful for that, I think, can also be difficult at times. 
So if anybody else is feeling that way, just know that you're not alone, that uh, it can be hard to feel comforted and nourished and nurtured during these times. I do have a garden, beautiful garden. <laughs> So I have been spending a lot of time out there, but it's also, it's just me. So it's, it, it's a little bit lonely. There's a lovely neighborhood dog, a neighbor dog um, who is over the fence. And so I, I give her treats and we have little conversations, but yeah, it's, it, it has been a lonely time. Thank you for sharing that, Dawn. That's a really important piece to hold, I think, right now. I'll also read out our latest chat message, time spent in our wonderful Rocky Mountains. I'm quite a social person. Um, I'm also fairly physical. I've really, really missed the opportunity to hug people and to be in the physical presence of others. Um, one of the things that I've done, though, is to find the richness of solitude and the, the gift of being alone more than usual. It's not a habitual place for me, not even always a comfortable place, but I'm, I'm learning to enjoy it more. And it really has brought me solace. I still want hugs though. They will come. <laughs> there are another couple of entries. Um, our garden has been a delight this summer, providing beautiful energy. Watering that garden has been a meaningful ritual. And I find strength in the stories of others shared with me and the stories I've shared with others. I find the walks by Cold Lake minutes from my house to be nourishing and refreshing. Yes, what would we do without gardens and nature? I don't know. <laughs> Me too. I've missed seeing everyone in the flesh, so to speak. <laughs> I love that phrase, in the flesh. Laura, do we have any more raised hands? Not at the moment. All right. I'll bring us back into our ritual space then, Don. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for sharing. Imagine, if you will, that all of our sustaining waters are blended together in this water chalice, spoken aloud, typed in the chat, or held in our hearts. Whether it is the water we drink to stay alive, the water that feeds our food and our planet, the water we swim in or, res or rest beside, whatever image you hold, imagine the essence of all these beautiful images gathered here in this one place. Please join me in the spirit of honoring and blessing. All water is holy water from the sky or from the sea. It is not holy because we pray over it. It is not holy because we gather it in a church. It is holy because it is the stuff of life, returning and cycling through the plants and animals, oceans and streams, cells and seeds, again and again and again. Now our musical meditation. While Sheila plays that musical meditation, we invite you to sit in peace and soak in the experience of being together. If you came to the service this morning, sharing any joys or concerns that you didn't share because they didn't seem to be fit during the water communion, then you are certainly welcome to type them in the chat during this song. They won't be read aloud. 
Each person's contributions of time, talent, and resources help to sustain this community. We are grateful that you are here and for all that you are able to do to support Westwood. Please join Rebecca now singing our offertory song. From you I receive, to you I give. Now is the time for closing words and extinguishing our chalices. I begin with the words. Our closing words are entitled Go Boldly and they're written by Jean Olson. Go boldly. May you be brave enough to expose your aching woundedness and reveal your vulnerability. May you speak your deepest truths knowing they may change as you do. May you sing the music within you, composing your own melody, playing the song, your song, with all your heart. May you draw, paint, sculpt, and sew, showing the world your vision. May you write letters, poetry, biography, slogans, graffiti, the great novel, laying bare your words to love and hate. May you love again, even though your heart breaks again and again. And until the end of your days, may your life be filled with possibilities and courage. We extinguish the flame of our candles, May we go on our way warmed by the love and celebration from this in gathering. Until we meet again. We're going to end our service today with um, a special Westwood song that uh, we've been singing for a few years now. Um, it's using the tune of Downtown, made famous by Petula Clark way back when, and adapted by our newly installed president, Susan. Enjoy.
when you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go westward. When you've got worries, all the songs and the laughter seem to help, I know. Westward, just listen to the music of the traffic in the city. Linger on the sidewalk where the library's so pretty. How can you lose? The lights are much brighter there. You can forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, so go to Westwood. Things will be great when you're at Westwood. No finer place for sure. Westwood, everything's waiting for you. Westwood, ooh, Westwood. Don't hang around and let your problems surround you. There are folks you know at Westwood. Maybe you know some small committees to join where the fun never ends. Westward, just listen to the rhythm of a gentle choir anthem. You'll be humming with them too before the night is over. Happy again. The talks are much brighter there. You can forget all your troubles, forget all your cares. So go Shine bright last one waiting for you tonight last one you're gonna be all right now last Show compassionate care, so go westward. Things will be great when you're at westward. Don't wait a minute more, westward. Everything's waiting for you, you, westward. You, you, westward. Come on, come on, westward. Thank you so much, Rebecca. <laughs> That's always so much fun and it's so wonderful to hear you sing it. All right, now folks, you are going to be invited to sh very shortly to share in a small group breakout session where you can meet some other wonderful Westwood folk and have a little chat for a while. And uh, be the West, carry this wonderful Westwood spirit through online. And we hope we'll see you next Sunday when we celebrate Shemitah, Shabbat of the Land. Lisa Stein and Alara Stefaniak Godet will be leading that service and they will be telling you all about it. <laughs>